Hi, it's Warren Whitlock here with another Emerging Technology Podcast. Today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles, otherwise known as self-driving car, although other, t other forms of transportation could be autonomous, really refers to anything where there, you don't need a human involved to get the uh, vehicle to go where it needs to go which is an interesting thing because so much so far we already use a lot of these technologies to reduce and change the amount of work that a driver has to do drones for instance no drone flies totally by itself but we use a lot of autonomous type features to get a drone to stay in the same place and take a picture which the selfie drone if nothing else but they also use it for targeting and weapons and things like that so and those i think are still controlled by humans but that's another thing to worry about but today let's focus on the cars and so that's the vehicle we're in all the time let's talk about what the technology is how it's being used now and what it's going to expand to and do we really have a choice as to whether or not we're going to use this and i come down on the side of saying not really. We we're all going to accept it and love it at some point. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay, let's get right into it and talk about the technology. There are some things that, that autonomous vehicles need to be able to do and besides get you from point A to point B. They need to know what, what's going on in the environment. That seems to be the big problem. They, they talk about there being five stages of autonomous driving. And what, to get to the top stage, number five, you really have to be able to deal with all of the things that a human could deal with and we put up with in the road, from potholes to people jumping in front of the car to routes changing and detours and all those sorts of things. That's always been where the trouble is. Getting a vehicle to drive on a track where it's told where to go has not been a problem for some time. So we're, that's what they're working on now. And it's always just around the corner, but let's talk about how that's being done and what we can trust about it and what we need to be concerned. First of all, you got to have some kind of computer vision. The computer can look at objects and tell what they are now with facial recognition and, and some of this stuff, the AI is doing, it's very possible that We've got that going well enough now that we can tell what it is. The car knows what it's seeing. And by knows, I'm talking about in a metaphorical sense, whether or not a car has any knowledge, is any self-awareness or anything like that. I think that's beyond this discussion. But, but the system recognizes situations. And then it uses LIDAR or radar you've all heard of. Radar is in there finding where things are by sending a signal and having it bounce back and be able to tell what the real terrain is. You ma match that up against a map and that's how it finds out the things it needs to know in computer vision. The, the computer vision takes care of the recognition. The LIDAR or radar takes care of a place, making sure that they, there's a good map of the terrain. And we do the same thing in our brains. We just need to program the machine to be able to do that for us, which I think gives us some freedom. Sensors. Oh yeah. Your car already has so many sensors. It knows most cars know when the door is open. Did you leave the trunk open? Have you, are, are, do you have any gas left? Or if it's a, an electric car battery, all those types of things are already known. If you're getting too close to drifting out of a lane or not able to recognize what's on the road, you're tired, you're sleeping, it knows those kind of things. And there's a lot of that being used now, steering assistance to, to, oh gosh, the one I've used for many years is I love using the, taking my foot off the pedal and using the, I can't even remember what it's called. It's so, come the, the set, up, set the acceleration on. And just keep maintaining a constant speed as you drive across an open area, like say deserts is what I do, headed in a straight line. The car knows where it's going. You pay attention to the steering 
and it takes care of making sure that yes, if you're there to take over if something an obstacle comes up. Uh, that's one that we have right now. That's that those are needed in spades when you have the car take over. Then of course you've got to have the machine learning. It needs to know. And this is one of the things that I think most people who are against or not against, but thinking that self-driving will never come and telling me that the car's never going to be as good as the human, uh, the cars, when I learned this was several years ago, in fact, the, I heard somebody say that a car was driving like a kid with a learner's permit, having trouble and not really knowing things, not having it much experience at all. But the difference between a car and the teenager was the car was going to get better every year, just like the, the teenager does, but that it, it was doubling or uh, exponentially growing in its ability to learn and have experience with this to the point that it just outpaces us. Because the car really can, the application I heard of, sheesh, this one's several years old, Google built a city in near them in California, I believe more in the central Valley. They took over an air force base because the land was all flat and, or I guess if not flat, the hills were known, but at any rate, they laid out some streets and of course they, it was a whole city, but there were no buildings because car doesn't need buildings to learn about routing and some things like that. And it was able to run cars through this city collect data and then rerun that data, especially when there was a mistake made and figure out what was the best thing to do and run it millions of times in a computer. And it goes back to what we've talked about with a digital twin. When you're able to make a twin of something, you're able to practice and invent and consider implications of various decisions, consider implications of all the decisions real quick learning why you don't turn right when you want to go left. And that machine learning is built up. Even more important is what Tesla has been doing. Tesla collects like thousands of points of information as you drive. They now have millions of drivers all feeding into a database that keeps track of every particular situation the car hits anywhere. So you take your Tesla and drive to a new city, it's got experience in that city, even though you don't. So saying that the car is better than you at driving is going to be, if it's not now, it's going to be really soon. And the, the other thing then, of course, is to really get into mapping the territory. We all remember this from learning to use GPS in driving, that it used to be you could look up something and if you if you followed the instructions, it was going to send you to the middle of the ocean, turn into a lake. And the, those stories went away as they got more precise and better. And now we have better GPS and we actually can tell which side of the street you're in, which lane you're in when you're driving in a car that has a good navigation system. And so these technologies exist today and are getting better all the time. Let's talk about some of the other applications. There's already driver's assistance. We talked about that. Highway driving, urban navigation, parking is great. Why do I want to go to all the trouble of precisely getting into a parallel parking situation or backing into a stall? I can do it. I've been driving a while, decades, unfortunately, many decades. Yeah, I can do it, but why not just let the car park itself? And even better, as I find it more difficult to get around it, I'm aware that I'm not handicapped and I'm glad I don't park in a handicapped parking space. I feel good that I have the ability to walk a half mile to the entrance if need be. I don't like it though. I'd like my car to go park itself and then come back when I need it. And geesh, why not? Those routes are very much defined, very easy to follow, especially when you get into a place we have here in, in Vegas, everything is designed for valet parking and pulling up, getting in the line, staying in order, very few obstacles that it doesn't recognize, and then letting you get into your car and drive off. Or it drives you off, we'll get to that. 
and keeping track of fleets is already being done. The AI figures out use, is it, was a car getting used for what it's supposed to, is it, has it been stolen? Is it, is it just sitting someplace and you're paying a service cost on a car that's sitting in someone's garage? All those kind of things can be done right now and are being used right now. And then predicting when it needs maintenance. Not only is the, is the car able to tell you when you're running out of gas or charge, it can tell you when, when you're going to need any kind of maintenance and hopefully with some sensors that improve just, just being able to know, Hey, I've driven 15,000 miles. I need X, Y, or Z. And the predictive maintenance will actually use all the more we put sensors on, the more we'll be able to predict when you're going to need something. And less chance that that's my greatest fear of driving is spending an afternoon in the middle of the desert without water. I don't go anywhere that I couldn't call, but, and get some help. But I think about that all the time and how many times in the past I was, had to use my wits, figure out what to do with my broken down car in the middle of the desert. I, it, I never had a problem where I couldn't, I lived through it all. I'm here to tell you about it, but boy. It's been an awful long time since I had to worry about that. So where is it going? We're going to, we're going to see this in everything. Definitely buses and shuttles. Every time I get on the, the tram at the airport and realize there's there, I'm sure there's a person watching what's going on, but nobody is, is having to flip the switches. The programming is so good. Everybody knows you go in one side, you get out the other side. The, it, you know, exactly when the tram is coming, it counts it down to the second and everything just works like it's supposed to. There are sensors on the door so that somebody doesn't get caught with them or their luggage half stuck in the door. And it knows what to do if those things are going on. All the announcements are recorded. And I remember when I first started using those many years ago, you'd hear a, a lot more often, you'd hear a live person announcing something. Now it's hardly ever. I don't know how far that goes, but we know that it's getting better. And autonomous delivery, boy, it's really nice that I enjoy it. I get a lot of stuff delivered and I, I like to tip heavily and take good care of those people. They're, they're doing a great job for me because I don't have to go to the grocery store and pick up the stuff. I just point at something on my screen and a couple hours later, it's, it's on my front porch. I, I played with the, have them come in and put the stuff away, which seems nice, but I decided I, I really don't care. I like the break of being able to pick up a bag of groceries and put them away. And those couple of minutes break and whatever else I'm doing, we anticipate it at my house. It's been years now doing it. It's still something that's, oh, good. The groceries are here. Dinner is here. But what? Would it work if I had to go out to my, to the street in front of my house and take out a, from a warm compartment, what my food is or a cool department where my groceries were and carry it back into my house? Yeah. Again, as I get to be more of a senior, I think about, wait a minute, I'm not sure I could carry all that stuff in, but yeah, but you can't, those are working now and, and being deployed. But I think we're going to have a lot more of them. And actually what that leads to, a lot of stuff that I have delivered by a person. And a lot of times I get in a car and get driven someplace. And I'm thinking those just need to melt because the same vehicle can be used for both. I talk to my Uber drivers. They almost every one, I can't, maybe one, they've tried picking up the Uber Eats or the package delivery. And they say, yeah, but after once or twice, I decided not to bother with it. So I like driving people. Fares are probably more, but they like it. And especially as you get into the people with nice cars. And, but I think that's going to become more melded and we're going to have vehicles taking care of that. And ultimately leading to less vehicles on the street. Right now, we talked about this with the fleet management, knowing whether or not cars are being used. If, if the data is allowed and permissions are okay and everything, somebody like Tesla could tell us how many cars they have in a Metro, how many are being used, how many hours are sitting idle and where else they could be used. We're really to the point of just 
needing to turn a switch on in the software that when my car is done, my car knows my routine. I go, I do errands. I come home. I'm in for the night. There's people not far from me that are partying like crazy on the strip and my car could be used as a robo taxi and then come back and be there whenever I need it. Or if I needed it in addition to what I normally do, I could request it like I request an Uber. The, the button would on the phone would know, hey, use his own car if it's there. Or if I really wanted my own car, I could say, stop what you're doing, go off the road with taxi service, come home. Maybe with a little bit more notice because it takes 10 minutes to get to the strip for my house. But I think we're going to see much more of that. What we have to worry about is Number one, safety and reliability. Over 90% of all auto accidents are caused by driver error. So do, do I need to say more? It, overwhelmingly, cars are better drivers than humans. I've just saw some statistics. I may have even mentioned them on a former podcast. It's so much the automated cars are so much better that the one stickler is if an automated car has a crash or injures a, a human, it's big news because it's one, it's so rare. And two, it fuels all the people who are saying that car can't do it. The joy of driving. Yeah, maybe, but your ability to enjoy driving, is like saying you want to play in the streets and the rest of us want to get someplace safely. I think sooner or later, the insurance costs are going to go down on self-driving cars. And the insurance cost on people who drive their own car is going to go up sooner or later. It's going to be very rare. Like you still see somebody driving a model T people keep their classic car and they're still allowed on the road and it's anonymously. And I think that's going to be, it. there are plenty of places where the, where horses are allowed in traffic, but for the most part, no, we're going to, we're going to move on. It's going to take a while more. And I, for one, am not in too big of a rush for that. I want to make sure it goes right, but it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And we're going to have a lot more safety and less lives lost. Could you let, let a human drive when you know that statistically it's going to be unsafe? I think you got an ethical dilemma there. To me, that's a lot bigger than the trolley problem. The trolley problem is you've got to choose whether or not to run over your kid or people. And, uh, which decision would you make? There's the rational one that you got to save 50 people over one. And there's the emotional one. You want to save your kid over the ones you don't know the, the that's programmed into a, an autonomous vehicle. Frankly, I think that comes up if it's the right answer to that, by the way, is don't get in that dilemma, which the AI is going to be able as it gets smarter and smarter to figure out, just not get into that, that problem. Do you kill the passenger in the car and, or, uh, save the hundred people in the crowd? Let's not get into that situation. Let's stop the car before that happens. And I think that prediction is going to be more and more available. One of the big things about the predictions of AI by humans is that we don't, we're not that good at predicting. We can predict things. We do know, I'm pretty sure that when I get to this intersection, there's not going to be a car coming the other direction. So I'm going to plow through. We get to make that decision. If it's a flat road and absolutely no traffic around, you'd probably be just fine. Unless there's a radar sensor that you sensing that you didn't stop. But other than that, one's going to be harm. And I think we're going to get better and better at it because of the AI. We're much better at making predictions right now. We, we know what's coming in the weather better. We don't understand weather, but we're getting better. And it's the same with these kind of things. We're going to know more and more. What do you think? Let me know. Am I off base? Is there something that I've forgotten about what would make it wrong or morally wrong to turn off people driving cars? I'd love to hear from you. And that's it for today. That's the autonomous driving. And this has been Emerging Technology with Warren Whitlock.